Hello! Happy Tuesday! Thank you for joining me, everyone. I appreciate you being here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and craft, we work on a project together, and uh, we're here for about an hour or so every evening here. So thanks for joining me. Uh, we're continuing on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And we are gonna be trimming more half square triangles today. So making a bunch of half square triangles. So a square, Divide it in half, with two triangles, and you get a half square triangle. Uh, we made those by sewing two pieces of fabric together. We first drew, drew a diagonal line uh, between the uh, two corners and sewed on either side of that line. So we are gonna trim those tonight. We're gonna trim uh, down the original diagonal, and once we have that cut apart, we will have two half square triangles out of there. So that's a neat little deal with these. So we will trim those, press them, and then trim them down again until we get these perfect half square triangles here. And then ultimately we will be turning those into uh, a half chevron. So we're putting two of the same half square triangle together, just rotating them so that it is a chevron, or it's just like a diagonal line. And then we will, uh, we have the other ones done in the other direction. We will put those together and we get a little V right there. So that is the plan. And of course, a pile of those Vs get us a zigzag. So that is what we're working on tonight again. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Uh, if you, uh, want to work on this project the pattern is in my Facebook link and if you're watching on the replay on YouTube um, on penguin and fish movies on YouTube the link will also be there and if you want to work on this project or think you uh, uh, know someone that might want to work on this project I'd love if you shared this video with them we will be here for a while yet working on this so there's plenty of time to join in uh, alrighty guys Thanks again. I'm going to flip you around. We'll get started. Happy early Valentine's to you too, Joe. Alrighty. So this is our stack from last night. I've been stacking them so that I can just take the top one down and we'll have that diagonal that we're wanting. I'm going to set this aside. I'm hoping we can get at least that many tonight as well. So up here, I have, I have my stacks my finished stacks going. So here's the, the pile that we're still working on. That's what these are gonna become is this pile. And this pile over here are all the ones going, all the diagonals in that direction. And those ones we have completed. It's waiting for this second pile here. So let's get the, we'll get the iron out tonight. I got my, my rotating cutting mat. And here we go, let's get going. Okay, trimming down that diagonal. We've already sewn on either side here. So this is the same diagonal that we originally drew, drew that line on. And then we got our two half square triangles, one there. Ooh, that's a pretty fabric. And one there. So we get two out of out of that just because we, we did that diagonal and sewed on either side of that diagonal, magically have two. So this is what, if you, we arrange them just right, this is what's gonna get us that uh, diagonal line, that half of that chevron. Uh, so that is the deal, that's all we're doing here. But we want to press them so they're flat and then we want to trim them so they're all the exact size. So that's what we're, that's what we're up to tonight. So here's my little ironing board. I know, I, I like this, uh, all these rich saturated colors uh, for, for this project. It's been so fun uh, seeing what everyone's doing though for, for this, uh, the Charming Chevrons quilt here. Um, if you head over to the 
penguin and fish crafters group. So do a search for penguin and fish crafters. It should pop up on Facebook. Um, over there, there's a bunch of people making making the chevron quilt. And it, it's just amazing how different they all are. That's what I just love about it. Oh, yes, we are supposed to be in the 40s uh, for Valentine's Day. And then I think it gets cold again. But I think we might even, some parts of Minnesota, I think are going to push 50 uh, tomorrow, which is kind of incredible since it's been in the, you know, single digits and everything. Um, so we might have, we might have one nice day tomorrow. So that'll be pretty cool. Might have to try and go for a walk outside or something. That'd be new. I haven't done that in a long time. For all of winter, really, it seems. It's so sad. I should have got out there a little bit, but it's cold. Oh yeah, I did go out after the super or during the Super Bowl uh, period of time. But man, yeah, that was cold, cold. So yeah, this will be a nice, happy change, at least for a day. I think that's about as long as it's lasting. All right, so we're going to trim this down to the four and a half inch size. I have a four and a half inch ruler, which is perfect for doing this. Then I can just cut all the way around. And I have the rotating cutting mat that helps me too. You get a call from your long armor that uh, quilt is ready to be picked. Picked up. Nice, Joe, that's exciting. So Joe has a quilt that is done from the long arm quilter. How fun. That's gotta be like a big old present. Can unwrap that and see what the quilter quilter did. All right, got the one trimmed. Let's get the other. I'm also putting the diagonal line that's on my ruler. I'm matching that with the diagonal seam on this half square triangle. Then we should have perfect little half square triangles when we're done here. If you're new to quilting, this is a pretty common um, unit, block, quilt block unit, the half square triangle. Uh, you might see it abbreviated as HST in places as well. And all that means is it's a square that's divided in half into two, two triangles. Ooh, it looks like the solar system. I like that. Ooh, you had a lot of melting snow today, but it will freeze tonight. Oh, that's kind of the worst sometimes, Valerie, because then it can get all icy roads and stuff too when, when there's a good melt and then it... Turns the ice right away. This one feels a little thick too. I'm so paranoid now because I, I did one. Here, I'll show you. I think I have it here. I accidentally did one where I sewed two red pieces to it instead of just one. So I got like three pieces here. So I'm, I'm paranoid that I have more like this. So <laughs> this is a seam ripper situation here, but I had a few extras. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I have enough and I'm hoping I don't have to seam rip that one open and separate the pieces. But now I'm paranoid. So anytime a fabric just feels a little thicker, I'm like, oh no, did I, oops, did I, um, did I accidentally sew three pieces again together? Oh, it's a big quilt and you and you didn't want to you wouldn't attempt it on your own. Yeah. That's fun. I've never I've never sent out a quilt to be um, quilted before. Although I haven't ever done any intricate quilting on any of my quilts either. And I'm hoping to get into that more. I don't know. Maybe now that I'm making more quilts, maybe that'd be a good way to get it done. Just um, have someone else do do all the quilting. It's got to be fun though. Uh, working with the designer and picking out what you want your quilting to look like and everything. It's got to be neat. 
I'm excited for you, Joe. Let's see how it uh, see how it all turned out. So we're pressing these seams open because um, that's what's recommended by the designer, Krista Watson, for this quilt. And she recommends pressing the seams open. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm splitting the seam open like this and then pressing it so it lies flat, um, a piece of fabric on, on either side. So like a seam on either side, it's pressed open. Um, and she recommends doing that for uh, quilting if you're doing free motion quilting because it just lies flatter the whole the whole thing and it, it's easier easier to quilt on top of later. So we're we're gonna see. I have not done it. I have no opinion yet on that. So I'm excited to give it a try. I have not done free motion quilting on a quilt before or hardly at all other than like a two seconds on a, a little quilt block and uh, that's that's my plan for this project is I want to learn how to free motion quilt with it so I, I'm really excited to get this top done so I can start the free motion quilting although I suppose I need a, a back to it as well and you know what I'm not even sure I have batting for it <laughs> I may, I may need to put in a, in a search for, for some batting on this. I think Krista, who's the designer, I think she recommends a, like a cotton um, batting for quilting, especially if it's a first quilt, just because it grabs on to fabric really well. I am going to, I'll, I'll check out her book. So she has a book that I'm going to follow. So her book is Machine Quilting with Style, and it shows some free motion quilting and also uh, quilting you can do with your walking foot as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to run through here again. I'm thinking she has info on batting and stuff. So I will um, check that out before I get going too much because uh, I, I think, you know, I've been using for years, I've just been using up batting that I have, but I think I finally am down to um, the amount of batting where I don't think I'll have enough for this twin size quilt. Um, unless I Frankenstein the batting together, which I don't especially want to do, and I'm still not as sure I have enough. So since I'm using this as a learning, a learning tool to learn how to free motion quilt, I might just get the right batting for it too. Is that your blue fabric on the front button pink? Um, blue fabric on the front button pink. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking, Valerie. Oh, on the, on the cover? Oh, yes. All right. Yeah, I, I got it. So, it, it is. So this is, uh, this is the pink version of the pearl bracelet. I think it's by Lizzie House. I think, I think Andover does it. But yeah, I see what you're saying now on, on the book, Valerie. Yep, this is, this is the pink version or a little kind of like a purple version. Uh, I think they have those, um, I think it's Andover. I'm not, I'm not positive, but uh, I think um, they have all those pearl bracelet fabrics as if they're solids. So there, there's just oodles and oodles of colors of them. And they're, they're really popular. I think people use them almost as, you know, just something a little bit more extra than a, than a solid. Oh, your favorite. Yeah, it's fun that I love all the different colors of them. I think I might have a few more colors or maybe I only have those two. That could be two. I have a, that dark, deep navy, and then I have, I think there's a little more uh, kind of sky blue, or actually I think maybe it's more of a teal, I can't remember. In my quilt here.
But yeah, I think it comes in a whole like range of colors. And they keep reprinting it too. I think it's something that they just have on hand. So if you do a search for pearl bracelet fabric and then add Lizzie House to it, I'm guessing you'll uh, come up with a whole pile of it where you can buy it at all different sorts of stores. But yeah, it's, uh, I think it's pretty popular. Oh, you got your grip bits for free motion quilting. Yes, that's awesome, Kim. I, uh, I was using mine for the, uh, my hedgehog quilts and I don't know, I think I'm gonna really like them for, for the free motion quilting. So what Kim's talking about is, uh, I have them right here so I can show you these grippets. So a lot of times what people do for the free motion quilting, so first of all, free motion quilting is when you have your quilt and your sewing machine right here, and instead of the sewing machine moving your quilt for you, you're moving the quilt and you can move it in all sorts of directions so you can stitch swirls or stars or, or whatever you want really because you're moving it. But it's sometimes difficult to move, move the quilt with just your hands. So there's like little gloves that have like little rubbers on the bottom of them. Of them. But I never, I didn't want to get those because I have tiny hands and gloves never fit me. They're always like this much too long. Um, so I was doing a little search and I found these online. They're called Grippets. They're by Sewing Mates. So if you just do like sewingmates.com, uh, there'll be a little link for Grippets. And uh, they're little acrylic, um, you know, pieces. And then they have rubbers on the bottom and kind of these nubbins on the top. So you can really kind of butt your fingers up against them to move around, but they really hold on to the quilt so you can move as if you have gloves on, you can move it around and then you can, you know, let go and you don't have to deal with gloves and you can pick them up and move them. I think you can actually use, uh, if you do ruler work with your free motion quilting, you can use um, these as straight edges or you got the curves, you can actually use those. Uh, but anyway, I have not used them uh, uh, for the free motion quilting yet, except for my little test. I think I used it for the little test, but I'm excited to see how these work. So most people have the gloves, um, but I just was thinking right away that, oh man, I'm just, I just know I'm not going to like the gloves. Um, my mom has some of the gloves, so maybe I'll, um, next time I'm there, I'll uh, try the gloves out as well for free motion quilting and then I'll know for sure if I like them or not. But man, I have issues with gloves. I would have to chop the ends off and make them smaller somehow, I don't know. And I just don't like having all that on my hands. Like, I don't like the idea that I'll have to take the gloves off every time I wanna use it or something, you know? I think that's what a lot of people don't like about the gloves is because then you're stuck wearing gloves. So I'm gonna try with the, the grippets and see how it goes. Ugh, so pretty, I love this fabric so much. Oh man, it's hot by you, Jennifer. We're gonna make it up to 40 uh, tomorrow. That's our big news. Um, but yeah, it's been in the negatives. Yeah, it's your summer there. You're probably headed into um, fall though soon, aren't you? Oh look, I just noticed there's a, a chip out of the end of my ruler. I must have dropped it on the floor or something. Boo! Ah well. Guess I can only go, uh, I gotta start a quarter inch in when I'm using that side. I'll have to see if the chip of it's lying on the floor. I don't know. Or it's just cheap and getting old, that could be too. It's evaporating. <laughs> the ruler. Oh, Autumn, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, when I'm being uh, more aware of what I'm talking about, I usually say Autumn. But if I'm just like at home and in the Midwest, then I'll just say Fall. But I forget that that's not 
It's not always how people say it. Oh, one of your rulers warped? Ugh, that's no fun. I've had uh, cutting boards warp before. Not a ruler, that's impressive. Oh, use the extra small garden gloves. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah, I've heard other people doing that um, where they get the garden gloves that have the little grips on and move them. I could try that too, maybe. Yeah, if I don't, don't try my mom's uh, gloves. With the heat here, oh, your fabric has probably melted. <laughs> Yeah, you would not want to uh, free motion quilt with the the free motion quilting gloves. Oh man, quilting would be a tough deal in the summer, I would think, though. Oh, I'm glad you found me, though. I'm glad it worked. Oh man, I almost went on today. Uh, Facebook has, you know, all those fun filters and stuff. So I almost came on uh, on live today as a kitty cat for all y'all. <laughs> but um, I didn't know how to um, turn it off after I flipped the camera in this direction. So I think it would have just been searching for a face the entire time. I thought it was pretty funny, though. I was on like a minute or two late because I was just putzing around with the filters. Oh, with the doctor's gloves and... Oh, man, I don't want to do all that, Jennifer. That sounds like... Ugh, I don't know if I want to... I don't, I don't know if I like the, wear, the idea of wearing gloves, period. Like, I, I'd rather have my hands free, I suppose. So, I don't know. We'll see how the grippets work. I think it's going to be good. I'm excited to give them a try. And uh, I mean, I've, I've used them a little bit here and there, but not for full-on free motion quilting. And that's, I'm excited to give them a go uh, for that. what I originally had intended to use them for. I got them at the same time that I got my sewing table because they looked, they looked cool. And I wanted to give them a try. I like this one too, it's pretty. Pretty flower. Oh, you think the grip it's going to put less strain on your hand. Oh, that that's interesting. Yeah, if you guys get the the grippets or you're giving those a try, I'd love to hear hear how they how um they fare for you guys as well. And you know, I mean, if I think something's weird with them, I'll I'll say for sure too once we get it going with it. But yeah, maybe I'll, um, I do have some of those garden gloves um, for gardening. I, maybe I'll just bring them in and give them a good wash and, and uh, give those a try too, just to see what the difference is with gloves on versus not gloves. They're probably frozen solid right now <laughs> in the garage, but we'll thaw them out. All right, my pile's getting a little bit bigger here, so that's nice to see. Man, it would be really nice to go for a walk outside tomorrow. Since it's going to be in the 40s, and I think it's supposed to be in the high 40s as well. 
So maybe that maybe that's gonna be my my goal for tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see if it happens, but I don't know. At least around the block. It might just be totally sopping wet everywhere though from snow melting though, so we'll see. Oh, but I can't wait till spring and summer when I can just go for walks outside again. Last year, we did a lot of mall walking, which is just so funny, but uh, it was nice to get that walk in. Seems like with the gloves, the grip part is just the fingertips. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's true. Okay, that's a good point, uh, Kim. So Kim says it seems like the, the gloves, uh, the grip part is just the fingertips, but with these grippets, you can kind of use your whole hand uh, to put pressure on it. So you're not just um, putting pressure with your fingertips and maybe straining your hand. Um, so that's interesting. I, I, I see how that's, that could be the case for sure. I'm excited. Oh man, it's supposed to be 60s by you tomorrow. Oh, that's approaching, that's approaching full on like early summer weather here. Man, that'd be nice. It'll be just nice to hear birds again and have a window open. There we go. Oh my god, you're a hundred plus, Jennifer! Oh god, yeah, that's, that's tough. That's, that's a, that's tough too. Yeah, it's those extremes. Extremes. I wonder if we'll get any heat like that this year by us. Either way, you gotta have the house basically completely closed up, which is no fun when it's super hot or super cold. Oh, it's mid fifties there and you're freezing. <laughs> mid fifties would be amazing right now. Oh, seventies mostly by you. That sounds just about perfect. That was a nice thing. We we lived outside the um, the San Francisco Bay Area for a little while, and it really was like spring every single day all year round. So that was kind of kind of nifty. Blue sky and spring air. Every day. Ooh, this guy again. Uh, we lived in just outside of Santa Rosa. So just a little, a little ways north of the San Francisco area, <clears throat> just for a little, a little while, like a, a little over a year, I think. So maybe a couple years. It's fun with even just the the same fabric, how, just how the pattern is cropped with each triangle, it, it can look, it can look different. So that's, it's always a fun discovery opening these up. Yeah, so it was really weird to hear, you know, how all that area was on fire, um, you know, a few months ago there. It's pretty freaky just to know that, oh, that's about where we lived. That's scary.
my mom's happy that we're back here in the Midwest, though. Because you know California is going to fall off into the ocean. <laughs> That's what she'd say all the time, at least. All right. <laughs> You've been there all your life and you're, you're not in the ocean yet. Oh man, look out. <laughs> All right, let's rotate these. Still really like that purple. So this is actually interesting right here, now that I'm thinking of it. You know, we talked about value, and here's uh, one case where the value of this purple is almost exactly, just, just uh, you know, it's, it's really close to the value of this uh, red. Um, so value meaning the light or darkness of a color when it's next to another color. So uh, um, if I was far away, I would probably not be able to tell that um, these were two different colors. So luckily with the rest of the quilt, we'll be able to get the idea, oh, that it's a zigzag. But if my whole quilt was just this purple and then this red, it would be super, super subtle because the values of these two colors are really, really close together versus like, like this one, you know, this is a much lighter value, um, meaning it's lighter. Um, the whole thing is lighter versus darker than, um, than this. This is much darker compared to that. But yeah, so um, the little value study that we talked about last night, um, or the, not last night, but a couple nights ago, but that just popped out at me just now as these being really close in value. And there's nothing wrong with it being more subtle, but only if you want it to be that way, you know? So the trick isn't having more high contrast, really lights and really darks versus, you know, more subtle contrast. That's not the point. The point is being able to control it. So you get the effect that you want when you want it. You know what I mean? So if you want a really subtle quilt, then do colors that are closer in value, in theory, versus, uh, versus more contrasty in value. So colors that are closer, a subtler quilt would be values that are closer, so closer in how light and dark they are to each other, versus um, them being super contrasty, the light and darks. Um, what made me decide to move to the Twin Cities? Well, I went to school here and really, I don't think we were, at the time we weren't finding a lot of work in California and we had a lot of friends back here in the, the Twin Cities. Uh, so we moved back here to try and get some more work. And, you know, we knew a bunch of people here and it's close to drivable to my family and everything too but mostly because we thought we'd be able to get work <laughs> just from knowing knowing more people here. That was probably like, I don't know, maybe probably approaching 15 years ago already. Maybe not that much, but I'm getting there, could be. All right. I still, I know I say it every time, but I still really like this. This, uh, every time I see this pattern, this kind of diamondy pattern, it grows on me more and more. It wasn't, I don't think it was a favorite before I started the quilt, but now, I don't know, just cut up in these 
little triangles, I burst of triangle, I, I really like it. Oh yeah, exactly, Michelle. I hear you. Michelle says, can't think of a better reason to move somewhere. Family. <laughs> I hear ya. And that's actually why we're in California, too, is my husband's family is out there. So we got to be by them a lot, which is awesome. But still needed, needed the work. <laughs> All right, there we go. Pretty, like this one. All right, well here's our here's our stack. It's it's getting smaller, I think. We're we're whittling away at it. We'll get there eventually. Here, later this week, though, maybe uh, maybe Thursday we will sew our stack together. So. Uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow we'll trim a little bit more like this. We're just working through that pile. And then I think maybe Thursday we'll need a break from all this trimming again and, and we can sew together all the pieces that we've done already. That'd be nice. Yeah, Michelle, I hear ya. Maybe they'll end up by you. Alright, let's press this open. I keep kind of not pressing these the greatest, but I'm trying to fix it when I press them open here. All right, trim this guy up. I really like this one still too, just painty. It's just fun to revisit all these fabrics. I had these fabrics picked out for a couple months, I think, before we started this project, just because I, I saw this red and, and I thought it'd be really fun to do all these kind of juicy, bright, saturated, fun colors with it. So I had them all picked out and was just waiting, waiting for our other project to finish so we could start this one. Ah, I know, I gotta finish, gotta finish my hedgehog too yet. Oh yeah, before I start sewing, hmm, yeah, it's still sitting, it's just still sitting to my right over there yet, the, the little hedgy. I'll show you it. There, it's hanging out on the machine. It's using up my machine space, so yeah, you're right. Before we start sewing, I'll have to try and uh, try and finish that up. There's so little to do on it, but I don't know. I keep not making time for it. Oh, funny, Jennifer. There we go. I'm always just double checking that I got the diagonal going in the right direction. This pattern I really like too. Uh, it's that weird, like, faded Hawaiian floral almost with with uh, the dots on top. It's just fun. Wow. Yeah, I'm really messing up the seams tonight. I almost feel like it's I'm on a weird part of my ironing board or something. Maybe my ironing board's mad at me because we talked about it. We were for 
being mean to it last night. <laughs> Saying I didn't like it. So now it's not being nice to me anymore. Oh, they took your sewing room! That's the kicker, Jennifer! Boo! Yeah, for some reason when I'm pressing it open like this, I usually like pressing it uh, to one side like this just to get, you know, the seam kind of started. Um, but I've been fumbling with that part. I, I paid a little bit more attention to it right now, so it worked. But then I, then I open up the seam after. But yeah, it's that first fold over that I haven't been doing a very good job of tonight. Oh, the, the dot, like, yeah, look at these. These dots are almost exactly like these. It's just such an odd pattern. You know, who thinks to put, you know, this weird faded Hawaiian floral type pattern and then throw, you know, dots on top of them. I just think it's clever and fun and I like it. I like it, like it. Yeah, and those dots just totally match this red, too, which is extra bonus points. That's actually one thing that I look for when picking out colors for a quilt, besides value. And value I don't, I haven't, I haven't been doing well at, and I, and I want to get better at that especially after we talked about it the other night. But I always um, look at the color. Um, it's actually the hue, uh, with the actual name of the color. So like red, that's like the hue. Uh, but I always kind of look at, oh, you know, oh, this has some fun purples and some fun reds. I should maybe try and find more fun purples and fun reds in the other fabrics that I choose for this quilt. So I'll go around in my scraps are in the in the store and try and find more stuff that color if that's if that's the color that I'm really um, being attracted to then I gotta look at the values too making sure I'm gonna be getting the contrast that I want between lights and darks and that all depends on what pattern I'm intending to use it for I understood, yeah, Michelle. <laughs> when a word doesn't quite fit in someone's sentence, uh, then I have to, then I guess. <laughs> I'm like, oh, those two letters are the same as what dots would be, and dots would make sense in this context. <laughs> it's always kind of funny, though. Here's that pretty purple flower again. It's coming up a lot on, um, on this side. These half chevrons, this side, the, the right side, or the um, starting at the upper right and going down to the lower left. That's the diagonal that we're working on now. Yeah, I think we have an overabundance of these purple flowers on, on this side, but maybe not. Maybe there are a bunch on the other side, too. But it'll all blend together when we're done, no matter if there's more on one side or the other. I tried to be kind of random. Uh, when we picked the two piles, um, I tried to pick at random, so I just had two equal piles. Oh, funny, Jennifer. Hungry puppy. So it's an extra step pressing these open, but we're giving it a try this time around. Following the following the instructions. I'm excited to see. It makes a difference. Ooh, 
I kind of scooch this one over a little bit. I'm going to scooch it down just a hair. Still want to be in that diagonal. There we go. I didn't have much leeway on this one. Which means I probably sewed the seam with too big of a seam allowance, so I have less, um, less actual fabric on this side. All right, there we go. And I have a lot of extra on this one, so I must have had a small seam allowance. Although this is that kind of gauzy fabric, so it might be stretching a little bit when I press it. There we go. I think we'll do a couple more tonight. I haven't seen this one in a while, this uh, black leafy pattern. I think this is coming undone a little bit, yeah. Felt like it was wobbling a little bit. My uh, my uh, screw is coming loose on, on the rotary cutter. Might be time to clean it and change it and all that again. Change the blade. We'll wait till this project's done, then I'll change that blade. It's nice if I can not have to do that in the middle of a project. Although we are doing a ton of cutting for this project. A lot of trimming. Well, this is it for the cutting, really. Um, all these half square triangles. They're all prepped and ready to go for our chevrons. So those don't need to be trimmed. So I just have to make it through this stack. So I'm going to have to do some more repairs on this sweater. Look, it's coming apart there. I'm going to have to add more, more weird crochet on it to patch it up. So one of these evenings, I'll have to do a few cro crochet stitches on the sweater, the uh, never-ending mended sweater. I washed it the other day, though, so it's nice and fluffy and smells good again and... I just have to make sure I air dry it so it doesn't shrink up into a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny a doll sweater or something. But we repaired the elbows here before, and um, you know, here's another little little patch here and there. Uh, we tried a few different ways of of mending the elbows. We did the the woven. Um, darning and then I just did some crochet stuff around the cuffs because I knew those would be abused more it's an important sweater it's my house sweater it's the only thing that keeps me warm in in the winter is this sweater <laughs> that's when you know it's starting to get nice out here again is is when um, when you stop seeing the sweater <laughs> Oh, this one's pretty. I like it. Let's do it. Eh, that house is going to be... House is going to be in a weird position um, no matter how I do this. There's a goofy little house there. We'll just do it like that. Man, this one felt like I had three pieces together there again, too. But nope. Just the two. I'm paranoid though. This is that one that looks like a sun print almost. I've never actually done that before. I feel like that's something we should have done in, I don't know, 
I took a photography class and I don't know, I feel like, or don't they do this in like elementary schools and stuff now where you do the sun prints, you have that special paper and then you lay like leaves and rubber bands and other stuff on there and then make the, the prints. I kind of find it weird that I've never done that before. It seems like it would have come up somewhere. Might have to still try and do it. Ooh, my cord got in a weird position here now. I could use a cordless little travel iron like this. I like using um I like using this little iron here just because it's it's not so heavy on my wrists and hands and it takes up a lot less space here in the evenings in my tiny little work area here. But dang, that could do without the cord. All right, I think we'll trim this up and we'll do one more tonight and we'll see how big our pile is. We're making progress though. It's making me happy. Man, this poor hedgehog though, quilt. You know what? If we get to the sewing part of this and that quilt's still on there, we may just have to work on the quilt for <laughs> for a few minutes and get that done and then then change it to to um, sewing these guys together. So we may have a uh, half of our evening, we may take a little interlude into uh, working on that hedgehog quilt. <laughs> Maybe that's a good excuse anyway to put some time on to work on that. That's what happens when you work on an unfinished project. You all of a sudden start work on it, uh, working on it a little bit more after you uh, you pull it out again. So that's a good thing, right? All right, this will be our last one for the evening. Ooh, I just really like this, this uh, fabric too. This one's similar to how the dots were on the other one where they sort of matched my background fabric and which made it kind of maybe a good fit for this project. This is kind of the same thing. It's got a lot of these reds that kind of match up with my background red. And I really, I really like that in this this uh, fabric picks. Come on, seam. There we go. Doesn't want to get pushed open here. So pretty. This is one of my favorites still. Just these blobs. I like these painted, painted blobs. I just need to, I should do a fabric collection sometime that's just all painted blobs. There's just something just so fun about them. Just like how organic the painted look is. All right, I'm gonna press this and that is it for pressing tonight. Let's trim up these two and call it an evening. I do feel like we made some progress though. I'm feeling like my, my pile of these half square triangles is getting taller and I feel like these little, uh, the pile of the squares that we cut these from I think that pile, that stack's getting smaller. Visibly, visibly smaller, that's the key. Because <laughs> usually it just looks like it's been the same size for ages and ages. This one barely fits here too.
basically just cutting the dog ears off of this one. All right, last for cutting. There, pretty. All right, guys, that is it. Here is our stack. So this is last night's and tonight's. If I squish it, it doesn't look like as much, but um, we're well on our way, making some half square triangles there. And uh, this is the stack we have to go yet. So we're, we're whittling away for sure. Uh, I still think it'll be a couple nights to finish this, but we might sew, we might stop and sew. Uh, like I said, maybe we'll, we'll trim tomorrow yet, uh, make the stack a little bit bigger, and then, um, then maybe Thursday we'll, we'll finish up the hedgehog over here and then start sewing these guys together. So Thursday and Friday we'll probably be sewing and, and pressing these guys. I think that sounds like the plan, and then, you know, then we'll finish up whatever we got here yet. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Hello. So thanks again, guys. Uh, we are working through this and I'm just excited to, I'm getting into the zen of all the cutting and, and trimming of this now that we've done it for a little while. It's just kind of relaxing, especially at the end of the day, just to trim, you know, put on some music or something and, or chit chat, <laughs> which is what I'm doing here. And uh, it's just been really nice a good relaxing way to end the day. And then once we have this part done, then we can lay out the whole quilt on the floor. And uh, I don't have a design wall. I don't have any wall space for that, but um, lay it all out on the floor and we can rearrange, get it just how we want, get all the zigzags going exactly how we want. And uh, then we'll be ready to just sew this whole thing together, which is, you know, that'll be coming up quick, really. I mean, we've been at this stage for a while, but we're gonna be done with this in no time, probably. So I'm excited. Uh, I will get this up on YouTube, this video, along with all the other uh, videos that we've done. They're all on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I have everything uh, organized by project. So if you missed one of our earlier projects or, or if we mentioned one here uh, that you wanted to check out, I have them all there by project. So you can check that out. And uh, if you want to share what you're making, please share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see what you're working on, or especially if you're working on this project here with us. And uh, that's that for the evening, guys. I will see you tomorrow. I'll be back here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks again. I will see you then. Good night.